Yo, what's up guys, it's Bev from Artifact. In the last video, the first video, this is the second video, we talked about preparing your clone files to be ready for Spark AR. There's one more thing we needed to do though, but it would have been too long to really talk about or explain, I think. So it gets its own separate video. It's talking about blend shapes. Blend shapes are super, super crucial. It's, it's really how this whole thing works in Spark AR. Anyway, um, so we need to go over that, we'll cover that, and then we'll get into really building your clone filter. So we're on the last few steps before you can just go crazy with being creative and figuring out exactly what you wanna build. Okay, so you should have something like this at this point. So if you click on your head model, and I'm gonna pull this up and go down to this little button right here, this little triangle, right? green triangle and then drag this down these are your blend shapes okay so I'm gonna actually make a little more room here so we all can see this a little bit better so these are your blend shapes you have a bunch of blend shapes in here this is the issue with blend shapes okay blend shapes take up space they account for a huge portion of the size of your clones model and I'll give you an example right now what we exported last video yours is probably something similar because you have the same blend shapes as me is I have 8.8 .8 megabytes of file size right this is a problem it's a big problem and I'll tell you why if we go to spark AR and we go view and we go show asset summary you can see here we are exceeding the amount allowable for a Instagram filter. Instagram allows you to have a filter that is four megabytes. Four, yeah. We're at nine right now. And we know the head is 8.8 .8 for me. So it is more than double the file size because of how many blend shapes are included in the clone model. So we need to strip that down dramatically to get what we actually need. Okay, so to do that, to adjust our blend shapes, we are going to just remove blend shapes that I don't think are necessary. And then you can also experiment to see how many blend shapes you can fit in there to kind of create the effect that you want in your clone filter or remove more than me. It's up to you. If you need the space, this is what you're going to play with to really adjust how much space you have in your clone filter, right? Okay. So if you see here, these are all the different blend shapes and the one up here is called basis. Don't delete this. If you delete this, your face will not sit here in this neutral idle looking state. It'll, it'll, it'll be off. You'll never have this state. So you want to keep the basis um, no matter what. But if we look through these, some of these aren't necessarily useful. Some of them are, some of them are more useful than others, but like, You'll see here, like I'll go to the bottom and I have nose sneer, right? So if I, if I get kind of close to the nose here and I drag this right, you can really see how that nose just kind of barely pinches up like that. And then the other one too, kind of just pinches the nose a little bit to create that effect. If you want that in your clone filter, you keep it. If you don't want that in your clone filter, we're going to click on it and we're going to hit the minus button up here. And every one of these that you get rid of, the closer you are to a smaller file size. Okay. So I'm going to go through a bunch that I feel like aren't necessary. Brow down. Hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Let me see. So what I'm going to do in this example here now is I'm going to grab the face here and then grab the eyebrow and grab the eyebrow. So all I did was click hold shift and without letting go of shift click again and then without letting go of shift click again you know hold shift and just bang 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 so all these are selected and i'm going to join them real quick so i'm going to hit join and then up, up here at the very top you're going to see it's called eyebrows now because i selected that last but i'm just going to put this back as head because this is the head model with the eyebrows attached and i'm going to see if that allows me to have a better visual of what's going on with um these expressions these blend shapes I want to put this in solid mode too. It might help me see a little better. You really want to strip it down to the things that are crucial, right? So brow down, let's see. Very, very minor. Nothing really important there. Mouth upright. Almost nothing as well. Uh, mouth lower down. So I don't think I need any of these either. This is doing really very little to nothing. Let me see if there's anything that does a lot. Blink. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a pretty big deal. It's not blinking over the eyes though. Let me see. Eye blink right. 
Oh, you see that? Boom. That's this this one we definitely need. Yeah, for sure. That's pretty crucial. I don't know if I need any of these though. I think I want I just really needed the smile left and rights. Mouth rights. Maybe I'll keep these for now, just in case. But I'm gonna get rid of everything that's not the smiles. So it deletes upwards. So I'm just gonna start at the bottom and just get rid of all of these. I'll keep the ones that say smile. Right there. I'll stop there. Brow down. I don't know if this is providing me any value either. Yeah, I'll get rid of those two. And then all of these blend shapes are part of your neutral eyelashes. So I think I'm just gonna get rid of all these two. And then this is really stripped down to what I think is crucial. You got blinking, you got some smiling, you got jaw movement, a little bit of mouth left, mouth right. Because I think in combination you should be able to do like a like a smile like this with the jaw open. Okay, so this is what I mean. By stripping down your blend shapes to only what you need, this is what I came up with. You 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 can definitely play with this, right? See what combinations of blend shapes as you experiment with Spark AR um, in the following video when we do really just the Spark AR part from exporting this right here into Spark AR and and messing with adjusting those blend shapes and combining how many blend shapes we move at the same time, right? Because when we do a mouth movement, it might be multiple mouth blend shapes that are occurring at once, but we also have to look at the file size. Because right now, if I have this object and I go file, export, GLTF, and I, I'm just going to name this 2. If I pull that up, and let's see where that went. Here. So the first one's 8, and this one's 3.2. 3, 3.1. 3.13. Right? So this is actually inside the guidelines of what we need. So if I delete the Spark A... I can't see anything. If I delete that right there, get rid of bye bye. Oh, keep it. Keep, keep. That was, uh, yeah, keep. And then go into here and then drag and drop this inside of here. This one is a lot lighter. Get rid of all these extra things. And then we can actually test right now. Let's click the 3D objects. System data right here says nine. This anything under system data as any file size that you're getting under system data. This is just a save. It's like a temporary save storage cache kinda um, thing going on. So if I go like file save and then um, clone filter tutorial, sure. That sounds fine. And then I go file open recent clone filter tutorial. Uh, it still doesn't work because I'm still in the same session and it has a lazy loading. So if I go new effect ah, and I close out the last one, discard, and then I open this up and I go file, open recent, and then go clone filter tutorial, right? And then I close this one and open this back up. Now you can see it's the same file here, but we got rid of that system data that was storing things we didn't need. And our size is now 3.1 because... That was our object, 3.13. So we're actually in the right range now. You can see it's green where this could be uploaded. So now you have that space by deleting some blend shapes. So you can play with this. If we add all our textures in the next video and we set it all up our clone filter and it's like 3.5, you can actually go and test again and try to add some more blend shapes and rebuild it with more blend shapes to see how much detail and quality you can get in your specific clone filter without sacrificing or without wasting that available space, right? Because we need it to be as close to four as possible to provide the most quality without sacrificing anything. You know what I mean? Okay, so that is blend shapes. That's how we adjust the blend shapes. That's how we export the blend shapes. I did a trick in there that I might want to point out real quick where I join the eyebrows and the eyelashes to the head. Um, this is optional, so it's not a required step. So I won't say that it is with the last video. So you can test with it, see if it works better for you to have them joined or see if it works better for you if they are not joined. It's just up to you to experiment with to see which is better and adjust your blend shapes until you have the right amount that you feel is necessary. And you're only going to know that in the next video. So in the following video, that one's going to be almost only Spark AR. And we're going to actually build the clone filter now that you have blend shapes figured out and you have the files all prepped inside a blender for Spark AR. All right, that's in the next video. Let's go over there.